What's up, family and friends? How are you doing? How are you enjoying your life? How are you enjoying your day? How are you enjoying your night? I welcome you to this live broadcast, as usual, encouraging you to join us, the Woke Nation, as we seek and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear, without faint, without favor. And with all boldness, speaking what we know and doing what good that we know. Kuchenna, you're welcome. So I titled this, See the Egyptians Again. Everyone that know the Bible or every Christian, every churchgoer, supposed to know where I'm driving at. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, remember, I don't subscribe to the Bible. I scrutinize Bible. I already studied, but I don't try to study Bible again. I know the Bible like the back of my hand, so I scrutinize the Bible and use it to open the eyes of our people to see the lies, the, the fairy tales, the, the nonsense they used to cage us. So I'm using it to, um, to, to liberate us, which is what everyone that knows Bible or Quran or Torah is supposed to do. In that book, they used to, to, to enslave you, use it to free those who are still there because you can understand, you understand the code in, you understand how they, they, they are written. So use them to help people. I cannot quote Quran because I never read Quran. I cannot quote Torah I, because I have not read Torah. So but the Bible, I know. And you, you're supposed to know that your Old Testament Bible, as the Christian Bible, is different from Torah. Old Test, oh, Torah. Torah don't have old and new. It's Christian. It's Christian Bible that have old and new. So but they copied from Torah or from the Judaism. That's why it's like that. So they use the Bible to make us to forsake or forget our ancestors. And they put it in the Bible. Let me read it. Exodus 14, I think it's 14, 14, right? 14, 13. He said, and Moses said to the people, Moses that never existed, so that said to the people that never existed, just in this story, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall see again no more forever that is their plan for africans but some africans still think oh slavery or oh, they are suffering according to the bible it will last for 400 years no they made the slavery to last forever they don't want you to be free that's why they give you independence that's why they give you integration that's why they call it colonization. They plan it to be forever Africans. Understand what these people plan. They say that the Egyptians, who you see today, you shall see them no more <laughs> forever. When they came to Egypt, they saw the greatness of our ancestors. They saw the great structures. They saw the great library. They saw everything that man needs to enjoy his life. They invaded, killed our ancestors, stole those things, and tell you, as we kill these people, we don't want to see them again. But we survive. We are still here because you cannot stop the sun from shining when you read exodus chapter 14 verse 13 is talking about africans they call us africans they call us egyptians but we are originally archibulans we are the kemet or uh, as some people call it the kemites now these people are so wicked they killed our ancestors and penned it down and said that these people, you will not see them again. They don't want us to rise again. They don't want us to live again. But they cannot stop the sun, the moon, the stars from shining. They must shine. 
and they, and they will illuminate others. So they will see, and that's what we are doing. Those of us that are rising and shining, we are waking others up to rise and shine. No matter how long you have been buried in that dungeon, we are coming out there to set you free unless you want to remain there and die there. Then, then it's your choice. See another place. They used to make you forget your ancestors, forsake your ancestors. Why they want you to hold their own past, forget your own past. Anyone that tells you to forget the past is, is lying to you. That person is deceiving you. You don't supposed to forget the past. If you don't know the past, you can't live well now and your, your future is not guaranteed. It's when you know the past, you will understand yourself. You will understand your now and plan well for your future. You need your past. Without your past, you will not have present. And without your past, you will not have future. Isaiah 34, uh, 43, I think. It's 43, right? Where yeah, it said, uh, remember, not the former tense, 43, verse 18. If I'm still right, I used to put all that nonsense off, you know, but I don't subscribe to Bible anymore. And I write it down and still struggling with it because it's she. Yeah, here, verse 18. Isaiah 43, verse 18 it said, do not remember the former things. It's like the slave masters telling Africans whom they ship from Africa to America, to Caribbean, to other places of the world. And also they send the missionaries to tell the Africans living in Africa, do not remember the former things. Do not remember the, the, the pyramids. Do not remember the great works your ancestors the, 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 uh, achieved. He said, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old, the things of your ancestors. They don't want you to consider them. And they say, behold, I will do a new thing. That's how they came. They are the thief that comes to steal, to kill, to destroy, and change your life. That's what they did to Africans. That's why they changed our identity. We begin to bear English name. Today I can say, my name is Thomas. My name is Felix. My, it has nothing to do with our roots. Just to disconnect us from that. Have you seen any white man adding African name to his name? No. It is only Africans that are doing that as we speak. Welcome. So understand why, why they tell you do, what they tell you don't remember and why they tell you don't remember. They say don't remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. Let us co consider what, what are the things of old. You say Abraham was the father of Isaac and Abraham become maybe the father of many nations, right? Is Abraham not part of the former things or the things of Abraham? Are they not old things? So why are you still remembering them today? Why are you still considering them today? You Africans, you say through faith in Christ, you are children or sons of Abraham. Is the death of Christ, is the birth of Christ not former things, not old things? Are they new things? But you keep remembering Israel, the old Israel in your Bible. Everything about God old in your Bible. Why Isaiah 43 verse 18 said, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. That was the slave masters telling the slaves they, they stole from Africans. The people they stole from Africans, the people they invaded and they brutalized, they tell them, do not remember the former things. That's why they gave you the Bible. That's why they gave you the Quran. That's why they gave you the Torah. To keep you from remembering the former things, from considering your ancestors. They don't want you to consider your ancestors. They call them, that's the past. Forget the past. Bury the past in the past. No way. If you don't have past, you don't have present. And that's exactly what is happening to Africans today. Africans don't have past. Therefore, they don't have present. They are slaves. They're supposed to be kings and queens, gods and goddesses, great men and women, but they are not. They are slaves all over the world, all over the world. In Africa, outside Africa, they are slaves. 
So they use the Bible to make you forget your ancestors, forget the greatness of your ancestors, forget your heritage. Your heritage is not in the present. Your heritage is not in the future. Your heritage is in the past. Until you recover your heritage, you will keep doing struggling and I mean suffering and smiling. You know, in those days, I, I don't think if they still write it today in in Fege or Nisha, especially Head Bridge, when you're going through the Obo Road or uh, you see all those nine one one. They write behind it, struggle continue, and they keep struggling. From church to church, from mosque to mosque, from temple to temple, these people keep struggling. Why? Because they lost their heritage. Your heritage is in the past. You need to get it back. People that do not have their heritage are slaves. Slaves lost their heritage. And that's why Africans are slaves today in all over the world. It is time you wake up and trash all this nonsense they used to detach you from your ancestor. Yesterday I was, I was, I was, you know, I, I was arguing, let me use the word, arguing with the one stupid old man. He's my co-worker here. We work together in the same place. He's older than me. And he's still talking like those village women in his village that don't have access to internet or to smartphones. He said, I belong to God, you know, talking about defending the God and Jesus is believing. He said, come on. I said, what? consider your ancestors. He said, I am going back to 100 years ago. What is wrong? We're supposed to go back to a million years ago because our ancestors existed before Abraham, existed before Yahweh, existed before any religion under the sun. Millions of years back. We are the Akebulams, the original people on earth. You need to see your ancestors again. You need to see the Egyptians again. You need to see the Akebulams again. You need to see the sun shine again. Because the sun went down yesterday. You don't say, okay, let us forget about the sun. It went down yesterday. Okay, no, I, I, let us look for new things. Let us forget about the sun. No. You know the sun will rise again. That's how you're supposed to rise again. And that's what people like me are doing by all means to wake you up so that you can rise. Together we will rise up. When majority of us wake up, uh, we begin to see the Akebulans taking the powers in Africa back to restore the glory and, the, and the recover African heritage again. We were done. These people did not just speak to us or preach to us to forget our ancestors, to forget our heritage. They beat us. So we are beating to forget. Beating to forget our ancestors. Beating to forget our heritage. Beating to forget our, our greatness. And that's why you see us, you know, yearning for their greatness. We want to dress like them. We want to speak like them. We want to act like them. We want to build like them. Why they were people that learn from us. Now we we are their teachers, we are now their students. And that's why they are teaching us more to forget ourselves, to forget us. But the Akebulan in us can never be silenced. It can never be killed. That's why people like me, we keep declaring it with all boldness, regardless who is offended. We must keep speaking the truth we know until the truth prevails. Look at the Caribbeans. You see the black people in Caribbeans, those they took from Africa. If you look at them, you see the uh, Akebulam in them. They still have those trees they took from Africa. Some of them still have that culture, still have that tradition there. Taking them away from Africa did not stop them. No, the distance, there's no distance between you and your ancestors. The very blood that run through you is, your, is the, the same blood of your ancestors. And when I'm talking about your, your, ancestors, your, your ancestors reincarnated or reincarnated, I'm talking about blood. Some of them were killed. Their blood is speaking from the earth. 
Some of them died natural death. Their blood is speaking in you. So whether from the ground or in you, your ancestors, the Akebulans, are speaking to you, calling you to rise up and revenge. Until you revenge, you will not restore your, 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 you will not recover your heritage. But you need power. Powerless people cannot revenge. Slaves are powerless. They don't revenge. They have to escape force. So escape, free yourself, then restore your power. Restore that African power they call voodoo. Restore the real one. Then use it with weapons to recover your heritage. Let it sink in. You want to see the Akebulan? Look at the Caribbeans. Look at those black people there and see how Akebulan manifests in and through them. Oh, you want to look at the church? Look at the black churches and see how the Akebulam is manifesting in them. When they begin to dance, they say they are dancing in the Holy Ghost. No! It is the blood of your ancestors. You, when they hear certain sound, they begin to dance to the drum. And you, you don't, some of them don't know how to control themselves. They just begin to dance. One white man try it. He fell. So <laughs> he thinks he's enjoying it. It's not made up. It is the Akebulam, the black power. It is in our blood and it surrounds us. Look at the American football. That's why I love watching American football. That is the best sports I love. I, when I was in Nigeria, I used to love football, uh, soccer bits. Nah. <laughs> but you see American football. When I see those black guys score touchdown, look at how they dance or when they make play, look at how they react. It is the Akebulam in them. They, you say, how did they get to know this? It is in us. We don't go to train to dance. No, it is in us. We dance because we get the world music. We are the first musicians in the world. But some of you think it's white men that gave you music. I you believe they gave you uh, mathematics now. Look at also to uh, all these American uh, black artists uh, like Beyonce. Look at Beyonce. Let Beyonce dance. She danced like African princess. You see it manifest. It's the Akebulan in her. The Akebulan in me. Or you can say the African in me. Love the African in you and it recognize it when it manifests. When I see my brethren playing, when I see my brethren, that's how oh, I, I, I am moved because it is me also. How about when that Akebula rises, you see that you need to restore that glory and recover your heritage, Africans. We will not forget our ancestors. Let me show you how they beat us to forget our heritage through Jesus Christ. Eh. They take this, this, the slave ship Jesus to take us away. And they take the whip Jesus to beat us. It is right here. Luke. Luke chapter 12. This is how they beat us to forget our ancestors, to forget our past, to forget our great heritage. No, but we are going to restore them. We are waking up to our, uh, our historical memory and self-confidence. It is the Akebulan in us. Luke 12, 47 and 48. He said, this is how they beat us to forget our past, our former, former things. They say, and that servant who knew his master's will, that slave, who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. That's how they beat us. They tell you by his stripes we were here. No, by his stripes we were enslaved. By his stripes we were, we, we were taken. By his stripes we were forced to accept Christianity, accept Islam, accept Judaism, accept all this evil in our land. The slave must do his master's will, but he said, don't do it. They will flog him with many stripes. That's how they beat us to forget our ancestors. That's how they beat us to forget our Akebulans. 
but you are coming up. Verse 48, but he, the slave, who did not know. Oh, that's the part they, they really love. They don't want you to know. They say, but he, who did not know. Don't, don't worry. Oh, he did not know. Okay. Yet you committed things deserving, deserving, deserving strife. Deserving of strife shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. They keep asking the more from us. Why after they took from us all we have? Are they still not coming to Africa? Are they not still coming to Africa? I'm asking you. Understand the Bible is the manual for the slaves. The Bible is not the word of any God. You are greater than the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible invaded Africa, killed Africans, stole from Africans, destroyed African culture and tradition, and then changed African lives from good to worse. So whether you are a slave that know or a slave that don't know, you, they still beat you. And they are still beating us. When you are reading your Bible, believing it as the word of God, that strife is on you. They are telling you, forget the former things. Forget your ancestors. Don't remember your ancestors. And I said to you, who are Christians or Muslims that have forsaken your ancestors or forgotten about your ancestors, your own children will also forget you. Hold on, please. Hello, Obi. If you test in Sunday, you know, I'll be able to five now. Okay, 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 now I'm gonna animate you now. I'm so glad. All right, okay, I'm going so glad. Okay. Now they, they, they beat us to accept their lies against our truth. Our ancestors, they are our truth. That man said to me yesterday, my, my, our ancestors are dead. I said, of course, because without them, we won't be here. Somebody have to die for you to live. They died for us. Jesus did not die for us. Our ancestors are dead, but they are living in us, and they are living through us. We are one with our ancestors. We are not one with Jesus. We are not one with Abraham. We are not one with God. That's why they say it is by faith. No, it is by blood. Family is by blood. No matter how you care for somebody, family is by blood. Blood is thicker than money. Blood is thicker than faith. Blood is thicker than spirituality. Blood is thicker than religion. The only thing that makes you family is blood. Don't fall for their lies. They made up different words that make you feel, I think they are right. Oh, uh, no. Your best friend can never take the place of your family. Ozu Shibushi. Ezieni. Allah. No matter how you say, oh, that's my best friend, forget that. Your best friend may make you to hate your, your, your family members. Don't do that. No matter what, no matter the fight between you and your family members, blood is thicker than money. Blood is thicker than connection. Blood is thicker than friendship. Family, family, that's your family. Your ancestors are one with you. And I want you to know this. They forbid you to know. Because they say if you don't know, you will receive small strife. That's why they say endure to the end. They want you to endure, not enjoy to the end. No. He say he who endure to the end shall be saved. He's talking to slaves. Slaves are the one meant to endure. Why the masters are meant to enjoy. But that's why we are waking up. Uh, we, we, are wake, uh, the woke nation are, are, are waking. And we are in exploring and enjoying our lives. We are not enduring. No, I don't endure life. If, if you're coming to make me endure life, I cut that relationship. I don't want to endure. I want to enjoy. Slaves, we are called to endure to the end for them to be saved salvation that does not exist 
but the masters are enjoying. Just like Africans are praying for heaven, preparing for heaven, while the whites are, are, are making heavens and enjoying heaven here and now. You are worried about where you will go when you died. They don't worry about that. You are the one that worried about that. That's why they gave you Christmas all that, and they're still making money off it and making you more slave. Christi Christianity, Christmas, everything about God, everything about Christ was said to make you good slave. Knowledge is the forbidden fruit, and I have this to say to you. The forbidden fruit in, the, in, in, in Genesis becomes the Egyptians in Exodus. I don't, I don't think you get it. The forbidden fruit, that forbidden fruit you read in the book of Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3 is actually the Egyptians in the book of Exodus. They that forbidden fruit becomes the Egyptians. He said, he said, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall die. And the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. Do not go back to Egypt. It became their law. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to survive because it is people of knowledge that are surviving or succeeding, doing great things. Without knowledge, you cannot do great things. That's why you see the Africans that embrace prayer. They are praying, they are praying all that, yet nothing is happening for them. You need to be like if in Genesis chapter 3, be like Eve. Stop being like Adam. Adam is waiting for somebody to give him something. God came and gave him commandment. Then Eve came and gave him <laughs> another one. He keep eating whatever you give him. He's living in the garden. He's supposed to be the master. But he's not. He's living like slave. Waiting, give me, give, give us this day our daily bread. Be like Eve in Genesis chapter 3. What did Eve do? Hear it. God, they said, forbade them from eating of the tree. But hear what Eve did. Be like Eve. Don't be like Adam. I like, I love Eve for this. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a allegorical character. So I know what I mean. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Verse, verse 6. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. He says, so when the woman saw, you need to see my people. If God exists, you need to see God. If Jesus exists, you need to see God. Anything they preach to you, they tell you this thing exists, asking you to believe by faith. No, tell them you need to see. You need to see, not just believing. He said, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, what did Eve see? The tree is good for food. He did not, she did not see evil. God said it is evil. He said, I didn't see any evil here. God says the tree of good and evil. No, all the Eve saw was good, not evil. Religion wants you to see good and evil because religion introduced good and evil. But naturally, we are all good. Nature is good until religion came. Come on, understand this Bible. It's a dangerous book. When you understand it, you will no longer live in, in fear. God said it is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. No. What if saw was this is good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of it. She did not only saw it. She saw it. She considered it. Then she reached out. She used her head. She was not like Adam, who we are running about naked, vulnerable, without using his head. When you don't use your head, you become vulnerable. And when you are vulnerable, you will be living a miserable life. Eve opened the eyes of Adam. We need women like Eve today in our families, in our lives. Whether you are married or not, you need Eve. The woman that will open your eyes 
and stop messing your life up with all these religious beliefs and faith that white men imposed on us. She saw the tree. She considered the tree. Then she took. That's what you must do. You need to see the Egyptians again. See the Akebulans again. See the Kemet again. Then consider it. Do your own research and grab the fact. Grab it. Take your glory back. Take your power back. Stop listening to all the lies they are teaching. Say she took of its fruit and ate. She did not give to Adam first. She did not give to somebody else first. No, for she ate first. Because the farmer is supposed to be the first person to partake of the harvest. Some of you are working while others are enjoying the fruit of your labor. No, it's not true. It's not good. If you make money, be forced to enjoy it. Then give to anyone. Don't let anyone cajole you. Oh, give to God. Give to your parents. Give to your siblings. No, give to yourself first, then your family. Don't give to any church. Don't give to any God. Give to yourself, to your family, to your friends, according to what you have. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate what happened to them did they die as god said no then the eyes of both of them were open africans you have to look back look at the egyptians again and consider the greatness of your ancestors then take it back begin to see yourself like your ancestors and see how your eyes we open. You no longer be living in fear. No one can threaten you with the God's wrath, God's punishment, all bullshit, all that hellfire, because you are both that now. It's time you wake up, my people. Wake up, my people. The forbidden fruit, the fruit of knowledge in Genesis is the Egyptians in Exodus. You're supposed to know this now that you are online. Now you can listen. Now you have access to this. You have no excuse to remain ignorant. You have no excuse to remain ignorant until the judgment day. If, if that thing exists, if, if, if the, somebody speaks about it, you need to know it. Not just believe in it blindly. Blind faith means you are stupid. It is the knowledge that is able to make one great. That is the same knowledge that made Moses in the Bible great. The Egyptians is in your Bible, Acts chapter 7. Oh man, come on my people. These things are no longer hidden. They are in plain sight. You can see the facts yourself. You can see the truth yourself. Stop running away from it. There's somebody say, don't dumble into something you don't know. Who tell you you cannot know? No, stop living in that nonsense faith and believes in Christ, in God, in Allah, in Yahweh. Fuck all of them and live your life humanly. Acts chapter 7 verse 22. The forbidden fruit of knowledge in Genesis chapter 3 is the Egyptians in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. Then hear what that knowledge did to Moses. Hear what that knowledge did to these people that hated us. He said, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Not the wisdom of the Greeks. Not the wisdom of the, of, 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 of the Romans. Not the wisdom of the Asians. Not the wisdom of the Babylonians. The wisdom of the Egyptians, the Akebulans. And was mighty in wars and deeds. Come on. Moses. 
the superstar of Judaism, the one that made Judaism what it is today. He said that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and he became might, he became great through it in wars and in deed. African, we must rise up to be mighty in wars and deeds as our ancestors were before the invaders, the demons invaded them and killed them, stole from them, destroyed their culture and tradition and changed our lives. They want it to be forever. No way. The sun can never go down forever. It will shine again. It will come up again. It will rise again. It is time. You must look again to the Egyptians. That is your root. Look back again to the Akebulans. That is your root. Look back again to Kemet. That is your root. The Africa you have today is not your root. That place you are in West Africa is not your root. Kemet is your root. Ethiopia is your root. Akebulam is your oh my, my Kemet is your root. Egypt, Egypt is your root. Ethiopia is your root. By the Nile, by the Niger, that's our. You need to know your root. The Niger civilization is the last ones. We ran away from the other place to there. They keep chasing us wherever we go. That's what they stole is wherever this, the full, the, full, the the sole of our feet touch up, it becomes gold in the whole world. Everywhere you see black people, that's where you begin to see great things. Everywhere in the world. That's why they kill us, or kill us up and say, no, they are the chosen one. They are the Israelites. They are the chosen people of God. Fuck it. Black people we are the first to be known as Israelites, Hebrews, and all that bullshit before these people came and begin to kill. You need to do your own research. We must look back to the former things. We must look back to go forward. If you don't look back, you cannot go forward. I told that man yesterday, can't you think why you can have rear mirror for you to see back? If you don't see back, you may have accident or you may become a victim. The reason why they put it there, you look at your back, it helps you to judge how to drive on. That's why they call it rear mirror. Rear mirror, it is inside the car, but it sees the back. Even your side mirror, see the back. You need to look back to go forward. If you don't look back, you are not going forward. You are just being good slaves. And you need to wake up and stop being slaves, even in your own land. Don't fall for the lying story of the lost wife. They tell you, do not look back. Lost wife, look back and turn to pillar of salt. No way, be like if. Look back. They tell you if you look back, you turn to pillar of salt. Use your head. Pillar of salt? Have you seen a pillar of salt? Have you seen a salt make pillar anywhere? Don't fall for that lying story of lost wife. They tell you don't look back. The lost wife look back and turn to pillar of salt. No way. Don't be too scared to look back to your roots. Leave the generation that cost their ancestors. All these African Christians, African Muslims, African Jews, they are the generation that have cost their ancestors. They cost their parents. And it's in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 30. Mm. We need to restore our webube, our glory. We need to restore it. It will protect us. We need to recover our heritage. It will enrich us again and make us greater even than our ancestors. That's the prayer. That's the wish. That's the desire of our ancestors for us to be greater than them. 
them, they, were, they weren't able. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11 says, There is a generation that causes its fathers and does not bless, bless its mothers. That's the generation of Christians, African Christians, the generation of African Muslims, the generation of African Jews. They curse their ancestors. They don't bless their ancestors. They say, let us bless the Lord. You are blessing the Lord that does, never existed. You have no relationship with that Lord. You have no relationship with that God. I bless God. I no bless your ancestors. Don't bless God. Bless your ancestors. Stop cursing your ancestors through faith in Christ Jesus. Stop cursing your ancestors through faith in God Jehovah, in God Allah, in God Yahweh. It is time you detach yourself, leave the generation that are cursing their ancestors because the way you treat your ancestors will definitely be the way your children will treat you. My Christian parents, my Christian African my African Christian parents cannot curse me and the stick. Why? Because they are Christians. They are not Akebulams. They are converts. The same goes to every one of us. No African Christian can curse me a stand. No African Muslim can curse me a stand. No African Jew can curse me a stand. That's why they go physical. They become violent. They want to kill you with gum. They want to kill you with matches because their cause cannot stick. But when you restore your African glory and recover your heritage, when you say something, the African people have that spoken word. When they speak it, it sticks. Even when Africa, the real African man, wish something to happen to you, it will happen because he's innocent. Ojirigo Fonogu, he's innocent. And you're accusing him. He said, you know what? You will see. It happened when I was pastoring a church in Ufuma. This man, he was a herbalist. His wife and children are members of my church where I was pastoring them. And this man came to me and said, he wants us to join together so that uh, I'll be bringing customer to him and he will bring him customer to me. You know, I, did, I, never, I never even think about that. He's the one that came. I made that proposal to me. I said, I don't do that. I am a man of God. I stand with the truth. It was a temptation, of course. Every pastor wants to have members, to have big offerings and big tithes, big money. I said, I'm not doing it. Then later the man cook up a lie against me. He said I was sleeping with his wife. The elders of the church call me and tell me what I say. E unless I am not true, but if I am true, you will see what will happen to me. That man ran mad in Ufuma. When I was, listen, when I was pastoring that church in Ufuma, I was very young, but they know that this guy, this guy is special. This guy is something else. But I was doing it in the wrong place, in church, in Christianity, because I was beaten to forget my ancestors. My ancestors called me. I say, no, God called me. Jesus called me. No, it was my ancestors that called me. Just as your ancestors are calling you. All these great men of God you see in Africa, it is the ancestors that called them. But like Samuel, they ran to Eli. Eli is like Jesus. Eli is like Jehovah. Some of them will come and some of them will die. But when they come back again, they will, find, they will declare the truth. They will know it's the ancestors calling us. Africans have that power in them and around them. And their land was holy. That's why when Moses stepped on that land, their God said, remove your shoes because the land where you stand is holy. It is the land of Egypt. It is the only holy land in the Bible before they begin to make up Jerusalem. But Egypt is the holy land. He said, remove your shoes for the land where you stand, Mount Sinai, is holy. The land of Egypt was holy. The land of Kemet was holy. The land of Ethiopia was holy until these criminals come. It's been in your Bible. 
The holy land, the first holy land in the book of Exodus was Egypt. That's where Abraham was saved and became rich. Abraham became rich in Egypt. Jacob, Isaac, all of them, they were blessed by the Egyptians, not by any god. Is the Egyptians that saved their life. Even when Jesus was born, according to the story of the Bible, Jesus was saved in Egypt. The angel of God could not protect Jesus and his, and his family. God Almighty failed to protect Jesus in Jerusalem. He said, run away to Egypt. That's where you see the real gods and goddesses that can save your life. Africans are saviors. And that's why they were envious and came against us and turned us into slaves. We are not slaves. We are saviors. And we are coming back to take our rightful place. No slavery condition is, is, is permanent. The, there is a generation that causes its parents, its ancestors, that's the generation of African Christians, generation of African Muslims, generation of African Jews. When you are an African Christian, an African Muslim, an African Jew, you are cursing your ancestors. And what happened to somebody that cursed their ancestors? The same proverb, chapter 20, verse 22. See what happened to you, and you see that's exactly what is happening to Africans today. Verse, tw uh, verse 22. Oh, no, 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 I think I made a mistake. Verse, uh, verse 20, sorry. 2020. Uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20. Hear what it says. It says Whoever causes his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in dark, in, in deep darkness. Now, Africans are the light of the world. But because they beat us to forget our ancestors, now they indoctrinated us that we are cursing our ancestors. We are now a people whose lamp has been put out in deep darkness instead of shining the light we find ourselves in deep darkness you know what that means you see the suffering in africa you see the poverty in africa you see african suffering why the rest of the world that africans are longing to be like are coming to africa and taking all the things that is making them great africans it is time we wake up you have caused your ancestors enough. It is time for you to come back. It is time for you to do your research. I'm not asking you to repent. No, I'm asking you to research. That's only where you will see how great your ancestors are. That's only where you can see how blessed you are. You put out your lamp in darkness when you curse your ancestors. The Egyptians, the Akebulans, the Moors. The greatest people on earth, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Africans, the ancient Kemites, the ancient Ethiopians, they are our ancestors. Look at the Yoruba tribes in Nigeria. They come from the Nile. Look at the Igbos. Have you not sometimes considered how you act and how you speak? You'll find it somewhere else. Come on, wake up, Africans. We, we are one family. Before they use boundaries and borders to divide us, it is time we know our truth, not their truth. We, it is time we know our, sto our, our, our story, not their story. We came from a great people, the people who brought civilization to the world, to the whole world. The Akebulans, the Moors, the African, the, oh, the, 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 great, the greatest people that ever lived. They brought civilization, great civilization to the whole world. That's why they were called Akebulans. All the land were black. 
Kemet, all the land were black. And black is where you see fruit coming from. The earth is black. That's where you see life growing from. Until the wicked ones come. Let us claim back our greatness. It is time we claim back our greatness, Africans. We cannot do it by just talking. May was. No. We need knowledge and we need weapon. Until we have these two things, we are just making noise. But the good thing about the noise is that the sleeping one will hear the noise and wake up. And when they wake up, they say, what is going on? Then they begin to do their own research. That's how we become majority. And then we step out to reclaim what rightfully belongs to us. Stop going to churches. Stop going to mosques. Stop going to temples. The, the oppressors built for you or gave you to worship in. Stop. Your ancestors built temples not for the worship of gods, for training. We are priests, trained doctors, engineers, and the great people that run the society. The priests of our ancestors were running the society. Before these people came and brought this nonsense, they call king. When one person will dominate the whole people, controlling the whole people, one person can say nobody will come out today and everybody will, will listen. Supposed to be the elders who are the priests. All of them doing that. They were trained. Do you know that it took 40 years to train a, a priest in Egypt? 40 years. Not all this one, you, you go to seminary for a few years, you come out. I'm a man of God. I'm anointed. No, 40 years. Because they are, they are the ones that train doctors, engineers, uh, uh, dentists, uh, all that. They are the ones doing all that. People were not going to temple for worship. They were going there for inquiry. What is going on? I know this, but this one I was surprised. Okay, they said, no, meet this one. He know how to handle it. One of our brother called me, and I shared the same thing with him. I said, it's not spirituality. It is natural. It is in us. Every African is endowed with certain powers to help one another. But they came and tell us, no, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't remember your ancestors. Just pray to God. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands and worship. God, pray, your prayers go up. Blessing come down. No blessing comes down. It is rain that comes down. And it, it goes to the earth. And the earth gives us all the blessing we need. It comes from the earth. Stop going to churches where you worship the dead white man on the cross. When you are worshiping Jesus, you are encouraging, you are supporting white supremacy, you are supporting white superiority, and you are supporting black inferiority. That's what you are doing when you go to church. Your ancestors did not go to church. Stop going to church worshiping white man, worshiping the Arab man. That is white supremacy. That is our, our Arab supremacy. Stop supporting them. You are supporting African inferiority by saying you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, you are a Jew. It is time you destroy, you restore your self-confidence. I am Akebulam. I am what I am. I am not a Christian. I am not a Muslim. I am not a Jew. I am human. I am spirit. I am eternal. I am infinite. I am frequency. I am energy. I am unchangeable. I am life. I can do all things that I dare to do. I don't need any God to help me. I don't need any Jesus to help me. As a man, I has, as a human being, I have all it takes to live. It is time you wake up Africans. Your parents, your Christian parents, your, 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 your Muslim parents, your Jewish parents, ignorantly pass this nonsense down to you. So you can end it. If your parents ignorantly pass this nonsense they call Christianity, Islam, and Judaism done to you, now that you know better, that now you have knowledge, you can end it. 
you can end it now that you know the truth and teach your children better. Don't teach your children the same nonsense your Christian parents taught you. Don't teach your children the same nonsense your Muslim parents taught you. Don't teach your children the same nonsense your Jewish parents teach you, taught you. It is time you teach your children for good. Teach them that life is good. Life does not have good and bad. It is evil people that introduce it's religion that introduce good and bad. Life is good. Life is fair. Life is precious. Life is eternal. Life is enjoyable. You can enjoy your life without stress. I want you to understand this, that Christian doctrine makes Africans inferior. It makes them converts. They are not themselves. The Christian doctrines, the Muslim or Islamic doctrines, the Jewish doctrines given to Africans in the Bible, in Quran, in Torah, it makes Africans inferior and confused. They are converts. Converts are inferior and confused. Anyone that converted you is your superior. Do you get that? Do you know it's in the Bible? This is what they made you. Matthew 23, verse 15. Hmm, it just can't listen. Matthew 23, 15. Let me behave like your pastor. Hmm. Oh, the spirit of my ancestor just came. They just reminded me this place in the Bible. Oh, that's how you <laughs> And you leave there and say, yeah, I tap it. Oh, God is here. Yeah, I tap it. I receive it. Speak up, man of God. Speak up. Nonsense. It's not a new God. All that nonsense. It's me. I have the knowledge of the Bible, so that's how it pop up when I'm talking about this one. The, whoever converted you is superior to you. That's why they call you pagan. Pagan means an indigenous person or indigenous people that have foreign God. You are worshiping foreign God, they, that not the God of your ancestors. It's not the God your ancestors gave to you. The, uh, the foreigners gave you the God you worship. You are a pagan. Pagan is not idol worshiper. No. Pagan is somebody who is worshiping foreign God, having foreign doctrine. Having foreign religion, that person is a pagan. So African Christians, African Muslims, African Jews, they are all pagans. Yeah, what they when they combat you, what they make you said, what to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for your travel land and sea to Africa to win proselyte, to win one proselyte, that's to win one soul, to win one combat. That's is he, is he, is he uh, Rehad Bonki. Yeah, he came to Africa, lied to Africa, say his God can cure cancer. He died of cancer because our ancestors get angry. <laughs> they say, this man, you must die. <laughs> you deceive our children. You must die. They kill him. Also, <laughs> my Smuro. You remember my Smuro? He was a great, many Africans were worshiping him too. Our ancestors come, say, kill him. <laughs> die. <laughs> he died in plane crash. How about Benson in the in the house, I become a god in the whole Africa. Our ancestors say, No, you die. <laughs> if you don't believe what I say, but you believe what the Bible says, then you are a moron. If you are a believer, you should believe everything I'm saying. Period. <laughs> you know what I mean. Who are the people that travel land and sea to win other people? The invaders, the enslavers. He said, they travel land and sea to win one proselyte. And when he is warm, you make him to wise as much a son of hell as yourself. The invaders, they are the sons of hell. That's why they did not come with their wife. They are sons of hell. They come raping our women. Even our men, they were fucking our men in the ass because they are sons of hell. Some Africans you see today have that Arab blood in them. You, they have that European blood in them. They are not true Africans. But when you see the real Africans, the real Akebulans, the Akebulan in you will connect with the Akebulan in them. And you will see how you will easily agree with them. It is time you wake up, my people. These people, anyone that convert, converts you is superior to you. 
they make you inferior and confused. And that's why Africans, many Africans today, are inferior and confused all over the world. Uh, can you report that? Can you say, I am not saying the truth? It is obvious. The Africans today are inferior and confused all over the world. It is time you wake up and stop praying like they taught you. Why are you praying? Praying is a form of begging. Slaves asking, ask, ask, asking something. <laughs> Always asking the master for something. Slaves, praying is a form of begging for something. Asking for something from their master. Give us this day our daily bread. Come and save us. Come and set me free. Come and do this to my family. Come on. You are a slave when you are praying. I don't pray. I stopped praying a long time ago. Prayer is a waste of time. If you are a slave, that's why you are praying. Slaves pray. Stop praying. Stop going to church. Stop going to mosque. Stop going to synagogue. Stop going to temple. Stop worshiping the God you don't know. Every worshiper of God are worshiping what they don't know. But no condition is permanent. You can change that life. They beat you to forget your ancestors. But you can beat them back with factual truth, telling them your ancestors are one with you. And no one can separate you from your ancestors. Peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.